it's Nathan, and this is week two of social media. And I wanted to talk to you about... Corey, what are you doing on this bench? Oh, you know, just uh, scrolling through Instagram, looking at puppy you're pictures. Right you're looking at puppy pictures? Uh, -huh. uh okay. Uh, always. Wait, always? Corey, is that like your favorite thing to look at on social media? I mean, probably. <laughs> Corey, what makes you smile the most when you're scrolling through social media? Funny videos. <laughs> Um, and puppies. Yeah, puppies. And puppies. If you don't know anything about Corey, she likes babies and puppies. Corey, what is the most encouraging thing you've ever seen on social media? Encouraging thing? Hmm, probably Annie F. Downs. She always posts really encouraging. Um, she's super vulnerable. Um, loves Jesus. She's probably most encouraging. That's awesome. And that's actually, like, really good to hear. Because more often than not, like, social media isn't really known to be encouraging. Like, it's kind of got a rep for having a bunch of negative content that hurts other people. And, like, you start playing a comparison game. And even last week, that's a lot of what we talked about, right? Like, whatever you consume on social media eventually influences you, whether that's good or bad. So, like, good meaning, like, Annie K. Frey or bad meaning you're a Texas Tech fan at Brad. Um, <laughs> but, so, last week we did talk about um, how we need to not let social media to find me but let God define my social media and this week what we want to talk about in week two of this series is how social media doesn't have to be about me at all but it can be about God and loving his people um, so with that said we're gonna jump in into Colossians 3 8 through 17 go ahead and open your Bibles up to that that you have your Bibles pulled up to Colossians 3, 8 through 17, I got my Bible up here. Uh, verse 8 says, get rid of negative language from your mouth. Um, people know that you're a Christian, right? We want them to know that you're a Christian. So they're looking to you, how you comment on things, what you post. Um, is what you're posting being an example um, to others of what Christ would do? Uh, remember, there's a person behind that screen, right? Uh, even though they have a username, there's a person behind that. Um, think, think about that person before you post. So now let's jump to verse 12. Verse 12 and 13, actually. So verse 12 says we should instead um, post with humility, compassion, uh, peace, patience, all those sorts of things, right? This whole passage in Colossians is talking about our new life in Christ, right? Our old life has been put to death with Christ, and now our new life has been raised to Christ. So we've got to use that new life for something. So this verse is talking about all of the fruits of the Spirit, as I like to call them. And the way I like to think of it is like if you are filled with Christ, that new life and you have Christ in you, living inside of you, then you're just naturally gonna uh, flow out. What's gonna flow out of you are the fruits of the Spirit, things like compassion and humility. So use those on social media. Um, verse 13 says, uh, to forgive as you have been forgiven. So uh, I'm thinking like, if someone posts something that I don't necessarily like, or maybe that offends me, or even is about me, or someone takes a screenshot that's about me and starts gossiping, like whatever that is, someone says something negative on your Xbox Live game, I don't know, on Fortnite, um, but forgive as you've been forgiven. Extend grace, just brush it off. Like in the grand scheme of, thing, grand scheme of things, you have been greatly forgiven in Jesus Christ. So, and therefore, we should forgive. Yeah, Nathan is exactly right. We should be posting in a way that exemplifies the fruit of the Spirit. Um, we shouldn't be gossiping or um, thinking about posting and showing our anger. We should be uh, living like Christ through our social media. Verse 16 actually says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. We need to use our social media to do that. But how do we do that? Yeah, how do we do that? Well, if you read verse 17, it basically says, do everything for the glory of God, right? Glorify the Lord. So here's one thing that you can do. The next time you're posting on social media, the next time you're making a dance on TikTok or playing on Fortnite or whatever, ask yourself, are the things that I'm putting out there and the things that I'm saying, are they glorifying me or are they glorifying God? Are they representing me and my desires or are they representing uh, Jesus, like am I loving him and loving others well on my social media? And another way I think it's easier for us to honor God with social media is by considering our time. You know, when I'm spending hours and hours on Netflix or YouTube or TikTok, it's a lot harder for me to be thinking about glorifying God and uplifting others. I'm thinking about myself. 
And so that is something that it can be really helpful for us as we navigate social media and glorify God and uplift others with that. Now, you might all be wondering why all of this matters. Well, as believers, guys, everything always comes back to Jesus and his gospel. It all goes back to the cross. You see, when right before Jesus went to the cross, he was on his knees praying to God, is there any other way that I can reconcile this world to you so that they can have a right relationship with you? And he finally comes to the conclusion, not my will be done. It's not about me, it's about you. Not my will be done, but yours. And then he goes to the cross and dies, and dies for our sins, which the punishment for those were, was death. So he forgave us this great, great penalty and paid for it on our behalf. And then he rose back up from the grave, which is awesome. And with that, he brought to us new life. So when we put our trust in him, when we believe in him, we have a new life. And that affects how we live from uh, the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep and how we use our social media. So I wanted to leave you with this last thought. And I said it earlier, so now's your chance to write it back down again. Social media doesn't have to be about me, but it can be about loving God and loving people. Hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you next week.